Hi everyone, welcome to the Senior Student and Parent Workshop where we will talk about four-year college planning. My name is Jennifer Django Cohen and I am the school counselor for the graduating classes of 2025 and 2027. As you can see from my photos, I love hiking and traveling and really find it exciting to talk with my students about um, all of their passions as well. So if you do need to contact me, you can reach me through this email listed here. And if you would like to check out our school counseling website, uh, we also have an opportunity to book appointments there. That little tab to the left that says book an appointment will give you the opportunity to just book a, a time for yourself that um, is convenient. The school counseling website has a lot of resources on it as well. Um, we cover the three domains of school counseling, so the academic, social emotional, and college and career topics. So I welcome you to explore the website and um, if you ever have any questions, this is a great place to get started. So today we are going to talk about a number of things for the college planning process. So we will start with talking about the typical senior year timeline and then finding the right fit college for you. Next, we'll talk about the research process. We'll move into the application components to, um, to look at the different applications for both private and public schools. We'll talk about some tips to submit a well done application. And then we'll close by talking about some additional resources and the many upcoming events that the Tahoe area is putting out regarding the college process. So let's start with our senior year timeline. So this is what a typical senior year timeline will look like when it comes to applying for college. So up until now, students have typically been researching, making some plans, finishing up with their testing, and reflecting on what their goals are for after high school. From September through December, this is when the typical college deadlines start to take place. And students will be working on their applications, having them reviewed by either um, teachers, myself, or parents, and then submitting them. December and maybe November is um, a good last chance effort for students to take the SAT or ACT if they would like that final opportunity to um, submit a test score before their deadlines. October through March is the financial aid window. So the FAFSA and the California Dream Act both open typically October 1st this year it will be December 1st um, and we will be holding a financial aid workshop in December to talk more about the steps to um, apply for financial aid. But the window does close in March to receive uh, state aid that would be applicable for um, the University of California or California State University schools. December through May is a good time for students to be pursuing scholarships. So we will be inviting students to submit the local scholarship application coming up this winter. So this is a wonderful opportunity for students to earn aid from the many different organizations that participate in this program. On May 1st, this is the National College Decision Day, and this is the date where students do need to officially choose their college and submit their deposit for admission. All right, let's talk about the elements of fit that come into play when students are choosing the right school. So fit pretty much means that students' needs and their wants are reflected in their college environment. Some of the most basic um, factors that students can consider are the location of a school and the size of a school. So it can be pretty easy for a student to know if they want to live close to home or to potentially uh, go across the country or even explore abroad in an international college. Size is also um, 
pretty important. So would you like to maintain the, the college environment that's similar to high school and be pretty small? Or is this now um, a time for you to expand and meet new people in a large school setting? It's also important for students to consider the social dynamics of a school. So what are the different clubs, um, athletics? What is the school culture of this school? Is there a religious affiliation? Are there potentially support programs for students with disabilities? Um, there are so many factors that can make it really a positive place for students to be successful if there are the right programming along those lines. And then of course, the academic piece of a college is very important too. So do they offer the major that you're looking for? What are the classroom styles? So are they large lecture halls? Or are you going to have a smaller seminar style setting for learning? So a student can think about what their learning styles are, how they best learn, and what environment they feel would be a good fit for them to make the most of college. So it is important for students to be not only thinking about, will a college accept me? Am I good enough? But I do want students to be considering, is this the right college for me? Do I actually want to go here? Um, sometimes it can be really hard to, you know, move forward with this thought because everyone just does want to see that acceptance letter. But ultimately, no matter how prestigious a university or college is, if it's not the right fit, a student will not receive the best education they can there. And so a student should really be considering what are the opportunities that this school can offer me and will this school give me the right tools that I need in order to be successful when I graduate. All right, so now it's important to start in on the research process. So this does take a lot of reflection for students because research requires students to consider what their priorities are. So I encourage students to talk it out with family, talk it out with friends, um, even do some personal reflecting time by writing in a, a journal, um, putting together some some ideas about what are all the different factors that are important to them in order to have a really wonderful four years of school. And you can do this by breaking it down between these three categories. So the first will be the non-negotiables, the factors of a college that are so important that they absolutely have to be there in order for a student to be successful. Next, students could consider what the factors are that are important to them, but if there are a lot of their other must-have factors already included in this school, then they could live without these other options. And then last, students do want to consider what are the factors that are absolutely not uh, good for them as a student or as a learner, that they would avoid these factors 100% in order to make sure they have a good experience. Uh, financial aspects of a college, so how expensive a school is, could be partially in this decision. Another really important way to organize a college list is to think about how students will fit in with their admissions criteria academically. So how competitive will a school be comparatively to a student's GPA or test scores? So I always encourage students to have between one to three schools where they are above that average GPA level. Um, these schools will be considered a safety school because most likely this student can feel pretty confident that they will be admitted. Then students should have the bulk of their list meeting uh, the target range for them. So that means that they are at the average range of admittance when it comes to their test scores and their GPA. And it is a pretty good uh, likelihood that they will be admitted because of this. And then there will be those schools where they are very competitive, um, they have very few seats, and many students who are applying are top tier. And so um, these are considered reach schools because no matter 
how uh, competitive a student is, some schools will just be difficult to get into due to their percentage of admittance rates. So you would potentially want to have in one to three schools that are reach schools if a student really, really wants um, the chance to see the outcome for this um, application. And getting organized is uh, your very first step for making sense of all the data that you're going to find when you start doing this research process. So I really like this spreadsheet style. Um, students can put down the name of every college they're interested in. They can add in different criteria such as the location, the size, um, what major the college offers, and then they can start to break down other criteria for example, when does the school need you to apply by? What are their deadlines? Do they have a different admissions requirements, such as an essay or recommendations? So these are um, this information will allow students to start prioritizing uh, what colleges come to their top of the, their list, and they will start to be able to manage their time because they know when their earliest deadlines are and what tasks need to be completed in order to submit a completed application by that deadline. So students have been introduced to the program SCORE here at the high school. This is a free program that students can access through Clever and this is a really cool way for students to start researching colleges. They can start um, doing searches with the different criteria that they prioritize as important and then they can start building uh, college groups based on the factors that um, are important to them. Students can also invite parents to join and uh, parents can help with this research as well. And I can also look at students' profiles and support students in their research process through SCORE. Uh, another really nice website that students potentially already have access to is the Big Future website through College Board. This is very similar to SCORE in the sense that it's supportive of students' college searching and students are able to get some um, tips and advice for uh, different factors that go into the college process. Students will already have made a College Board account if they signed up for the PSAT, the SAT, or AP tests. So it's pretty easy just to navigate um, in this case as well. So let's talk about the application components and some tips for doing the best possible work you can. There are a, quite a range of applications that students can use in order to apply to college, but I am just going to talk about the most commonly utilized applications students will find. The Common Application is a really nice tool in the sense that it houses over 1,000 different colleges and you can submit your application for all of those colleges just by making this one application. The Common Application has a main demographic section, an activity section, and a personal statement section that can be grouped and goes out to every school that a student adds in. Uh, there will be a separate fee for every college that you submit an application for, but the Common Application itself is free. Now, school-specific applications are when a student goes directly onto the school um, website and they only allow a student to apply via their website. So there are not that many schools that have this as their application process, but there are still a few. Now, the University of California system and the California State College program, those each have their own individual applications. The nice thing is that every single UC is on the UC application portal and every single CSU school is on the CSU portal. The, um, the same exact thing as the Comet app, so you'll do all of the work for each of these apps and then if you do want to apply to every single school um, within the UC or the CSU um, campuses, you can submit that one application and it goes to every single campus. You just pay that separate fee for each one. 
So um, in order to get your planning going, you are going to want to make a decision about when you plan to apply to schools. Many schools will have varying deadlines and they will have varying types of deadlines for students to decide between. So the first one I'll talk about is the regular decision deadline. This is often in the winter when the application is due and it's just pretty basic. It's uh, every application that is submitted is reviewed and then students will often hear back um, by April at the latest for regular decision. Now, rolling admission is different from the regular decision in that rolling admission could open as early as August of this year. When a student submits a, an application for rolling admission, the admissions team reviews it pretty much immediately as it is received, and then students will find out very soon afterwards about their admission decision. Rolling admission schools are oftentimes less competitive than other types of schools. Um, and this could be a nice way to incorporate some safety schools into your list. Now, the early action deadline is where a school will allow students to apply early. And this is oftentimes around November. Students who apply early it, the data does seem a bit skewed to support more uh, approved admissions uh, for early action. So if a student is really excited about a school and they feel ready to submit their materials on the early side, it could benefit them to submit through the early action deadline. Now, there is another application deadline that's slightly different from early action, um, but the dates are often similar. So early decision is oftentimes around that same November deadline, but the key word here is decision. So when a student applies early decision to a school, they sign a contract that binds them to choosing to go to this school if they are admitted. If they are admitted, they will not know their financial aid package at the time, and they will just have to move forward and um, put forward their deposit. They will need to withdraw their applications from every other school that they applied to as well. With early decision, this is the highest likelihood of a student being admitted to this school. So sometimes a student will make their reach school early decision, but I would strongly encourage students and families to really, really think about this choice because there is no flexibility if a student is admitted. So you want to make sure that the school is exactly what you're looking for, you've done all the research for it, and no matter what the financial aid package you could afford to go. And then you might see this last um, admissions deadline which is called restrictive early action. Every school is a little different with restrictive early action, but pretty much what it means is it's similar timing to early action, but there may be restrictions on how many schools a student could apply restrictive early action to. So they may only allow you to apply to one. Um, this is a non-binding application, however. It's not like early decision, so if you are admitted into restrictive early action, you are not bound to go. I'm happy to talk more about this with you all um, in individual meetings because it can get to be pretty tricky with all of the different options out there. All right, so let's talk a bit about the different sections of a, an application. So the first one that you will see on most applications is the activity section. This is where students are able to reflect everything that they have done over the course of the four years of high school um, all the awards they've earned, all of the uh, athletics, maybe work, um, different community service options. This is the time for a student to share this information. I did break it down by uh, the two most commonly used applications, the University of California application and the Common application. The University of California application has 20 spaces, which means you can share 20 different activities and there is a 350 character uh, description space. 
So students will want to uh, have in mind all the different activities that they have done, um, remembering back to freshman year, um, any honors they earned, um, put in that community service that is required for graduation anyway, um, and make sure to highlight activities that students have done that does support the major that they're pursuing. Now the common application is a little bit different in the sense that there is only space for 10 activities, but then they offer five more spaces for honors and awards. So the goal for the common application is you could try to group similar things together um, that you used for the UC application if you're finding that you're not able to fit everything in um, in only 10 spaces. The other tricky part about the common application is that there's only room for 150 characters, so you really do need to cut back and be concise on your descriptions. Use a lot of leadership language and um, language that shows all of the actions you've taken to really make an impactful uh, statement about your activity. Now, there um, are, as I mentioned before, um, essays that students do need to complete for different applications. So again, here I will talk about the common application and the UC application. The common, the common application has what is called a personal statement. So this is up to a 650 word essay where a student can choose between eight different questions. They pick one and then they are able to um, share on this topic. So there's a lot of flexibility in this type of essay. Um, students can get pretty creative. It's a chance for them to really share their unique qualities and to bring their voice to their application, which oftentimes is pretty devoid of anything other than data. Um, it's really helpful to have um, your English teachers read over your essay, and I love reading these essays and I'm happy to support as well. Now, uh, the UC application will require what is called the personal insight questions. There are eight questions offered as well, but students have to choose four of them to answer. These are shorter, so they're up to 350 words that a student can, can write, and they are a little bit different in the sense that they're less of a creative opportunity for students and more to um, demonstrate their ability in writing and to show growth um, in, their, in their history as a student. So I like to tell students that um, you have a lot of information on your application as it is, so what is it that you could include in these essay questions that isn't there in other, um, other pieces? And what would you feel if you didn't share this information with a college? It would feel incomplete, like they don't really know you. So think about that when you are um, starting out on creating your essay. Many schools will also require recommendations. So you are going to want to really think about who would be a good recommender for you as a student. You'll have to first look at what the requirements are for college. So some might say they want two teachers and one counselor. Um, if that's the case, then you also want to think about who are the types of teachers that you will want to write for you. Um, I like to tell students that it's really important not just to think about the grade you earned in a class, but also does the teacher know you? Do they know your work ethic, your character? Have they seen you overcome something? And then also think about the major you're considering and you would want to have a teacher that reflects um, that same subject that you're planning to major in. You will also need to complete your senior profile before requesting a recommendation. So this is a document that asks for all the different activities and, um, and reflections on yourself as a person and a student. And you can share this information with your recommender so that they have more insight into who you are. So you will wanna ask for a recommendation in person before formally requesting this re recommender on the digital platforms. Um, 
the, just so you know, UCs and CSUs do not require recommendations, so you will most likely be asking for recommendations through the common application. You want to give your recommender at least two weeks notice to make sure that the recommender can provide enough time to really do a great job. And um, you will want to tell the recommender when your earliest deadline is, and then either provide a hard copy or a digital copy of your completed senior profile to them. Everyone is uh, juggling a lot of things, so it's always helpful to follow up with your recommender a few days or a week before your deadline, just to make sure that they have everything they need to submit on time. And again, definitely beneficial to say thank you. Um, that extra positive glowing recommendation that you received from someone could make all the difference. There is a part of the common application that will be required to complete um, as part of the recommendation process. It is called the FERPA. It stands for the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. And basically what that means is that families and students have the rights to the ed educational documents um, that are theirs. For example, your transcript and a recommendation would be considered an educational document. So you will want to um, acknowledge that you are giving us the rights to send your documents out to colleges. And then you will want to look at the um, section that asks you to waive your right to review your recommendation. So you are able to choose between waiving your right to view your recommendation and not choosing to waive your right, which means that you would like to see it. But I will strongly encourage you to click I waive my right because what this shows colleges is, is that you have great confidence in what the recommenders are writing for you and that recommenders have not been influenced in any way when they are writing your recommendation. Colleges will view the recommendation in much higher standing and um, it is pretty standard practice for students to click I waive my right to view my recommendation. So that is uh, my suggestion for everyone. Okay, and so um, again, the senior profile is accessible on the counseling website. You can access it through the quick links tab and then hit counseling forms and you will find it there. So just take your time on this. Um, this is an opportunity to share things that a person may not know about you and can really shed light on any struggles you have faced um, or overcome um, and show what, um, what your growth and your potential for um, overcoming adversity can be over the course of your college career as well. All right, so testing is, um, you know, an important piece to this process, a little bit less so than it used to be. Many colleges right now are test optional or they will not even view um, standardized tests for the admission process. For example, uh, University of California system, uh, California State Universities, they do not view your um, standardized tests, but other colleges are looking for them. Um, so make sure you are doing that research to know what schools are looking for. Um, the benefits sometimes can be that even though a school may not look at your standardized test scores, they can often be used for placement in certain classes and they can be considered during the scholarship application process. So there is sometimes still um, a good benefit to take the test. There's still time to uh, take one more test, um, either the SAT or the ACT, because there are um, exam dates in November and December. Feel free to take either of these exams. Colleges will look at them interchangeably. Collegeboard.org is where you sign up for the SAT, and ACT.org is where you sign up for the ACT. Fairtest.org is a really useful website that allows students to search for their colleges and find out if they are test optional schools. Um, they will also be able to determine if a school will use a test score for placement purposes or other reasons. So it's just more information to help you make that choice. 
Now, a lot of schools um, will offer fee waivers if a student does meet certain income criteria. So you will want to make sure that you are paying attention to this because applications can really get expensive and add up. The CSU and UC applications will have you input your income number directly on the application. Um, so make sure this is correct when you do it. The common application will have their own fee, fee waiver section. And if you are eligible, um, this will send an approval form to me and I will be able to finalize it for you. And then the SAT also has an initial um, uh, fee, fee waiver section when you sign up. If you do need any assistance with this, please check in with me. Um, I'm happy to uh, help you to determine if you are eligible or even to get signed up with our uh, school district if you are eligible but haven't yet and would like to be added to our free and reduced lunch list. So here are some overarching application tips to help you to make the best possible um, application for you. So um, make sure you're really doing your diligence in reviewing your materials, um, rereading your essays, having other people look at them, and um, getting, getting every detail right so that you feel confident um, submitting it when it's time. Um, and then, of course, deadlines are also key to this. So you will want to make sure you have all of your deadlines organized so that you know that you are submitting everything on time and you don't miss any chances um, for being reviewed. And then I really encourage everyone to be as honest as possible in all of their work. Um, it's just really important to make sure that you are admitted into the school that is right for you. And so if you are putting out the honest um, accounts of your experiences, then you will absolutely find the right fit that way. And then once everything is submitted, your work isn't over yet, you still need to be checking your email and your school portals to make sure that you are getting all the updates that are needed and submitting any additional materials that the colleges ask for. And I do want to um, convey how important it is that students are owning this college process. It's really their last chance to um, get you know into their their real life adult um, type of experience when they move on to college and while there will be guidance through the school and through families uh, we hope that students are starting to feel the importance of making their own choices and learning how to follow through with the steps that are needed in order to meet all of these important deadlines so it's a really great learning experience and um, it will be necessary when they are on their own in the college world next year. All right, so here are some resources for you. Um, I will be soon inviting everyone to schedule their individual learning plan meeting. This is where families and students can come in and we can speak more personally about your specific goals and I can help with specific needs that you may have in order to feel confident about moving forward with your college process. I am also available every Wednesdays for students during RTI. Um, I will be up on the second floor um, outside of Ms. Jaroski's classroom. If students have any questions and they just need to do a quick check-in, um, that's where I'll always be ready for them. And then I would encourage you to check out the UC and CSU websites in order to um, explore these campuses more and learn more about the different um, application needs and um, some suggestions for uh, submitting the best application possible. And then similarly, the Common Application has a ton of resources on their website um, in order to submit a strong application through the Common App. We have a lot of upcoming events in the next couple months that I think would be really beneficial for everyone to attend. Um, Truckee High School is hosting a UC application support workshop on Tuesday, October 1st from 2.30 to 4.30. 
And this is a really unique experience. So the UC admissions counselor will uh, give a, sh a short presentation and then they will work one-on-one -on -one with students in order to finalize their application. So hopefully students can make this um, and get a head start on submitting that application. If a, this is of interest to students, they can sign up through this QR code at the bottom of this page. And that's a big day at Truckee High School because a little bit later at five o'clock, there will be a college and career fair. So this can be a really useful day for students to get a head start on all of their college research. Washoe County is also hosting a college fair October 20th. So this is a Sunday, um, so it could be a nice day trip down to Reno. And the QR code again is there if you would like to register. And then the Tahoe Truckee Unified District um, and matched with other private um, schools in the area are hosting a college admissions case study event at North Tahoe High School October 5th. And this will be really informative um, opportunity for everyone. Families and students are invited. The admissions representatives from these schools listed on this slide will all be present. And then they will run breakout groups and then bring everyone together in order to show how they make decisions about college admission. So it can be a really useful way to see how um, applications are reviewed and how decisions are made. And then also Incline High School will be hosting an event on October 21st. They will be covering the holistic admissions process, how to develop a college list, different application components, and financial aid. So this looks like a really great, um, great session as well. And then we will be hosting a financial aid night. It will be December 12th and we're inviting everyone to attend. Uh, students will learn about the um, FAFSA and the California Dream Act and we'll get a lot deeper into the, um, the basics of those applications. And then we will be hosting a workshop following the presentation to support families in actually logging in and getting their applications started. And I do just want to send a quick reminder to everyone that there is a community service graduation requirement. So the total for the class of 2025 is 24 hours. Um, so they will have needed to complete 24 hours by, by May really um, to meet graduation standards. And no matter how many hours a student currently has, they also do need to complete eight hours this year to pass their pathways class. So just be keeping that in the back of your head uh, when different opportunities come up this year to get involved. So I appreciate everyone tuning in for this and I look forward to meeting you all in person. Please don't hesitate to send me a quick email or a phone call um, or schedule an appointment if you would like to discuss any of this information further. Have a great day, thanks.